Welcome to my channel, my wonderful e-people. I am the Electrified Latina. And in this video, I will be talking about the differences between e-bikes and e-scooters. And I'm hoping to help you decide in which one is best suited for you. City electric folding bike. It has a 500 watt motor and this is a class 2 e-bike. I've been able to get it to 22 miles per hour on a straightaway. And over here we have the eMove Cruiser commuter scooter. It has a thousand watt motor and this puppy will go up to 36 miles per hour. Some people don't believe me but this is GPS tracked on my phone. All right, so I also have very good news to share with all of you. I recently launched a website. Yes, um, the name is TerraProCycle.com. And in this website, I have a nice variety. I am selling a nice variety of e-bikes and e-scooters and also some other hybrid PEVs like um, the, I don't know if you've seen them, but they're like the really fat tired city commuter scooters. They're also come with some off-road tires. You can go off-roading thanks to this fat tires. Um, but don't worry, uh, in this website, I won't be overwhelming you with all kinds of options because we did our homework and I picked only the highest quality, affordable and safest PEVs for you. When I say PEVs, I mean personal electric vehicles. So, so you know what I'm referring to for the rest of the video when I say PEVs or PEVs. So after hopefully I've helped you decide which vehicle is best suited for you, please head on over. I will leave a link at the bottom of the page and we'll see you there. So which PEV should you get is a big question of the day. Well, here in the United States, the most popular PEVs are e-bikes and scooters. Deciding on picking one can be overwhelming because there's a lot more types of um, electric vehicles out there, but in this video, we've narrowed it down to the two. There are several factors to consider when picking one of the two. First factor is comfort. In my opinion, e-bikes are more comfortable because you can sit down. Also, because the tires are bigger, they are going to absorb a lot more of the imperfections of the road than e-scooters do with our smaller wheels. Factor number two, portability and storage. In general, scooters are going to be super portable because they fold in half, they're easy to carry. For people, especially for people living in apartments or if you live in a place that doesn't have storage, you can just bring it inside with you. If you go to a store, you can bring it right on with you. If you go to work, just fold it, put it right under your desk. There are some folding e-bikes like this one it does fold nice and compact, but it doesn't compare to a scooter. And for the rest of the e-bikes, especially the fat tire ones, there are some that fold, but they still remain pretty bulky. Factor number three, ease of use. Most people know how to ride a bike. So this just transfers right onto an electric bike. There are just some things to learn as far as using the throttle and the pedal assist. In future videos, I will be talking about how to ride an e-bike. Um, if you don't know how to ride a bicycle, it's still easy to learn. You just have to learn how to balance it in two wheels. Now scooters, they're the most approachable out of all the PEVs. You don't need any real background or experience in order to be able to hop on 
and go. Factor number four. Do you want the option of getting exercise? Then definitely get an e-bike. If you're commuting to work and you don't want to get sweaty, then just sit down, relax, use your throttle, use your thumb throttle, and off you go. In the weekends, do you want to get some exercise? Well, you can choose to use as little assistance from your bike and get the exact workout that you want. With a scooter, you're not really gonna get exercise, especially if you get one that has a, uh, a seat. But uh, the, ones, the most common ones, you're gonna be standing up and yes, you'll be using some leg muscles, but you're not really getting cardio. Factor number five, intended use. What will you be using? You need to ask yourself, what will you be using this PEV for? If it's for commuting, how long is your commute? If you have a short commute, either will work. If you have a long commute, well, you have to think about range because e-bike back batteries are way bigger in general than scooters. Do you want to use it mainly for recreation? Either will work. Are you a daredevil or an adrenaline junkie? I would go with a scooter. Normally, scooters can go way faster than e-bikes. Do you want to take your PV on vacation? An e-scooter will be way easier to transport because you can just fold it, throw it in your trunk. With an e-bike, you have to buy an e-bike rack. And e-bike racks, they're expensive because they are made in order to support the heavy weight of e-bikes. Another question you need to ask yourself, are, are you going to need to pick up your groceries or haul cargo with it? Then choose an e-bike. With an e-bike, you're gonna have an infinite amount of weight to carry stuff. There are all kinds of racks, baskets, pannier bags that you can attach, and off you go. Factor number six, range. E-bikes are going to have a bigger range because they, are, they have bigger batteries. Scooters, in general, they can provide between 200 and 350 watt hours of range, whereas e-bikes start at around 500 watt hours of range and go all the way up to a thousand watt hours of range or more. Good. All right, guys. So after having talked about the six factors, let's summarize. To make it easy for you, I will list the pros and cons of each. We'll start with the e-bike. Five pros that I see. Utilitarian. You can use your e-bike for hauling cargo, to, uh, bringing your groceries. There, there are options where you can um, have two people on your e-bike. Versatility. You can ride in all kinds of terrains, especially the fat tire ones. Number three, the range. They're just gonna have longer range. Number four is maintenance. This is an important one, guys, um, because you're just gonna have a way easier time finding someone to work on your e-bike than a scooter. Um, pretty much any bike store is gonna be happy to work on your e-bike because they have the same components, for the most part, as non-motorized e-bikes. Talk about brake pads. Talk about your chain. Talk about your derailleur. Um, and there are also um, all kinds of electric bike shops popping all over the place, which will be happy to work on your e-bike as well. The last pro that I see on, the, on an e-bike is the safety factor. And this is due again because of their way bigger tires. You're just not going to trip on as small obstacles like you will with a scooter 
a lot of the times too, depending on the price, they come with better brakes, hydraulic brakes. Now let's talk about the cons, three of them. They are large and heavy. They're going to be harder to transport and store. And uh, the con is that they're going to be more expensive, a lot more expensive than an e-scooter would. Now we're going to talk about e-scooters and their pros and cons. For the e-scooters, I see five pros versus e-bikes. One, they're going to handle better in tighter spaces. Let's say you live downtown, busy city. You can ride it on a sidewalk. You can ride it easier in between people, in between cars. Of course, you have to be safe. Um, the other one is, uh, it, it gives you a more thrilling experience. Like I said, there's just something about that low riding to the ground. And again, they can just go faster than e-bikes. Number three, how easy they are to transport and carry. Number four, they're gonna be more affordable. Honestly, they're very convenient to use. Let's say you go to a store. You don't have to worry about leaving it outside, finding a, a bike rack, carrying expensive heavy logs, and then um, coming out to find out that your, e your precious e-bike has been stolen. So you have that too, right? You just bring them inside anywhere. For a student, bring it inside the classroom. Apartments, houses. That is just super cool about scooters. Let's talk about the cons now. Um, cons, smaller tires. You could trip on smaller objects, like we said. Comfort, it's not gonna be as comfortable as an e-bike. Again, because of the smaller tires. Um, and with an e-scooter, you have to be hyper aware. I feel like I feel more relaxed when I'm riding an e-bike than with a scooter because like any, have to look at cracks, potholes, small rocks, things that with an e-bike, I wouldn't even care. It's just gonna roll right over it. The other thing is, uh, the other con is that if you're not riding in like perfect pavement, especially for the scooters without suspension, it's going to be a, a jarring ride because of the, of the imperfections of the road. I have listed uh, the differences, the pros and the cons of each. Um, I'm sure there's stuff that I missed and I would love to hear from you what, what, you, uh, what you think. Uh, but also, I really hope that I helped you decide between the two. I know it can be a, a daunting experience. So I hope to see you on my website. And uh, thank you so much, guys, for clicking into my um, another one of my videos. And we'll see you soon. If you do want to pick up this electric vehicle, I've put the link in the description below. Also, make sure to check out my website at terraprocycle.com. There you can find all of my products sorted by category, including this one, of course. Hit the like button before you go and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, scooter, moped and hybrid reviews. I do love hearing from you and I reply to every single comment. Lastly, please join my community of electric vehicle fans on my Facebook page and Instagram, which you can find below in the description. Thanks for watching and happy riding.